Greetings in the precious name of Jesus. Once again, we we'll give thanks unto the Lord, as the psalmist says, for his goodness unto us. For so many times, the Lord has blessed us, even in this past week, delivered us and done great things. Whereof many times, as I used to hear the old saints say, uh, delivered from danger, both seen, and many times the unseen. And so we bless his name and thank him for bringing us into another day. As this month wears on and the season draws nearer to the day, we trust that everyone is being safe and that also we are also being aware of that which is going on, not simply in these United States, but in our own communities across the world, and as we look into our very domiciles, our own homes. Yet again, we have to give God praise for the great things that he is doing for us. Again, as we come today and bless the Lord for this day, we wish to draw your attention to two passages of scripture. Acts chapter seven, verse 51, and Galatians chapter five, verse 17. And out of these two passages of scripture, we'd like to uh, look at a particular thought that hopefully causes us to understand more readily what God is doing in our lives through the salvation that he has provided for us. Though it seems like there is much conflict, not simply we're talking about now someone else, but within one's own self. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Stiff necked and uncircumcised in your hearts and ears, you are ever clashing with the Holy Spirit, as your fathers, you also. And Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. For the flesh is lusting against the Spirit, yet the spirit against the flesh. Now these are opposing one another, lest you should be doing whatever ye may want. And all that believe God's word to be an errant and infallible joining with us, as we say, amen and amen. Out of these two particular texts of scripture, we wish to lift a thought today an incessant clashing, an incessant clashing, which means never ceasing conflict that's going on. And for a vital voce, we'd like for you to remember this thought. Only by his grace, I am winning. Only by his grace am I winning. Shall we pray? Father, we bless you today and we thank you. The great things you have done and are doing in our life, lifting us from despair, healing us from our diseases, delivering us from ourselves, and causing us to understand the power that lies within us. Strengthen us, encourage hearts, lift spirits and deliver as only your word can do as we seek to know more about you, in Jesus' name, amen. An incessant clashing. Acquisitions by all acquainted, it has been amply stated that any system that relies on behavior is inherently unreliable. Thus, God's grace is a phenomenon that has no parallel. Take that into consideration. Read that over and over again, because that is important. Humans, listen, we've come to understand that things are often more interdependent than independent from one another. I know it's true, we grow up in a family and uh, uh, we learn all about 
uh, our family living. And we're seeking, though, independence. We are looking to be independent as we grow up. That's why as you come through childhood and even the baby somehow wants to be independent. It wants to be liberated from the arms of the one carrying it. We want to get down, eager to walk. Childhood comes and we find that we are learning things. Then we go into adolescence. And, and once we are in adolescence and we get into teenage years, it, it becomes more forcible that we have and seems like an innate desire to be independent. But we have to learn that not just the family, it puts in us a understanding of interdependency that we much apply as we go through life. One thing for certain is when we come to solving problems many times, uh, we become futile in it and simply because one has not approached the situation properly. Listen, this is how kids do. You know how we used to do. We, we look at one thing and we're more focused on the piece that seems to be the problem to the neglect of the whole picture. You remember your parents, the older ones telling you, uh, but you got to see the whole picture. And maybe we were pouting it and we wanted something to go a certain way. And it just was not going to be because someone else was in charge, even of our lives, that they were sharing with us that whatever it was we wanted to do couldn't be done because it would have bearing on something else. Many times when we're young, we cannot understand that. But we will come to realize that even the uh, when we come to academics, you know, uh, it, it's important to realize even how it has grown, it has flourished, it has blossomed. Uh, the when we talk about uh, the academicia and uh, academia, they have accomplished a great paradigm shift. And when we look at it over these last hundreds of years in regard to a working togetherness and the inclusion of different specialties. Yep, it is true. You know, you look back and in many of the ologies, they were separated and everyone was trying to accomplish simply all by simply using one mean or so. Well, it wouldn't it be wonderful if the believers in the body of Christ, uh, if we have come to a maturation to understand this concept of the ecclesia and more so in the purpose of God in creation. Uh, one thing I think it's still missing and don't worry about it. We're all going to be there until the Lord shall come and take us out. But we ought to be diligent in growing in Christ so that we can omit some of the stress and some of the contention uh, that really still uh, is inside of what we call Christendom today. Uh, listen, great ministry is where there is a system that provides uh, an input or inputs that is conducive to affecting the whole by its parts. In other words, uh, you, you cannot look for a, a great one. I say great ministry, we mean one that is holistic. And somebody says, well, there, there's a big church and, and they reach out. Uh, listen, they're there for all of us, no matter whether the church is small medium or large, uh, we must admit that there are still fallacies in what we are taught by in school for system thinking. We still leave out, omit a lot of things and thus uh, you can never say that there is a perfect um, uh, ecclesia, I'm talking about man locally in any one place. Uh, just think about it. If we were to thinking about how God told Paul about the body and what he has written. Uh, uh, what is the body without all its systems? Think about what this the parenthetical group age is called, the ecclesia now. It's called a body. Uh, 
It is what God is working in in order to accomplish one goal. Think about it, even the scriptures, it said, what is the body? I believe Jesus was challenging them and said, uh, what would a body be if it was simply an eye? It would be all seeing, but it would have no hearing. He said, what if it was all just an ear? Uh, it would be hearing, there would be no vision. It would be stumbling. Uh, he said, the nostril, what would it? Go back to Deuteronomy. And he creates all these things and puts them for us in a body whereby we can find out that it takes a system to complete something. This entire creation is based upon system. The question you ask, where does system thinking even come from? Well, what we've all come to realize now that literally everything that's operating in creation somehow is in a system. And when we talk about system, most times, you know, science utilizes that same phrase and they uh, uh, put the word complex into it uh, because a complex system and uh, you got to understand it and you yes we got courses and we go to them and take them on complexity understanding it, how it works and how we ought to apply these are actually very good uh, it, it helps us to become really a part uh, of the mind of god i know somebody says well the mind of god is living holy you're right but listen the mind of god is in all of creation uh, uh, simply we don't understand it all uh, because we are the creature but if you believe that the earth is the lord's the fullness of the world and they that dwell there in that he is a God of all. Well, think of the human body again. And the human body uh, is arranged so that all the specialized processes uh, necessary for it to survive and reproduce uh, are carried out by different systems. Uh, look what God has done that each one of these systems is made up uh, of different organs working together to achieve uh, one common goal, life for you. Uh, goal in a similar way, we would say that when we talk about all all of these systems uh, all have to cooperate and work together for the body to function properly. Uh, ah, we have ills, we have problems uh, that goes because uh, one part of the body is not working uh, and it affects the other. Uh, listen, the 10 systems that we have, you know, you remember them from school, skeletal, the muscular, the cardiovascular, the, the lymphatic, the nervous, the endocrine, the respiratory, the digestive, urinary, integral movement, Gimentary. Listen, all of these things, uh, the Bible tells us uh, that God has done this so that we can be, what do you call it in the beginning, a living soul, uh, but considered to be embodied as both uh, what we call systems is a linear uh, and a complex system. They are two different. They say the body, we are both. And I can understand it. Uh, even as we're looking at God's word, uh, we can see it spiritually being accomplished. Uh, when we talk about linear, uh, we're not talking about mathematics right now. Uh, all of you that are in uh, the the economics and, and all of the sciences of math, uh, but we're talking about simply in this specific area, uh, being able to determine the change in one specific input, uh, a variable that we can create a specific outcome. Uh, that's what we call linear. Uh, you know, if you look at your graph, you remember uh, back in economics, you can remember what one was uh, when we deal with the linear analysis. Uh, but this here, it tells us that if you put in a particular thing into a system, it will come out with a predicted outcome. In other words, that if you take, for instance, a blender and you have milk in it and you add input is a banana and you have maybe what is called a slush or one of those type of drinks that you can take down in liquid form, you just keep 
keep on adding bananas. Nothing changed. The outcome is simply always a banana, whatever it is. It may become more in volume, but it's still the same. Uh, this is what we call homogeneity and we call additivity. Uh, these two things, uh, they make up what we call linear uh, when we call to a system. Uh, but listen, I'm going to share with you, this is what God tells us, uh, why it's so important to understand the power of God's salvation in your life. You may not understand all of these systems. You may have forgotten them uh, since you left school, and maybe they are not a part uh, of your everyday profession. Uh, but, but just think about it. Where we think about uh, from the linear systems to a complex system, the body is both. Uh, it's where numerous variables are interacting as we just went over as a network. Uh, they are all parts. You know, Paul says this. Uh, he says, we are one body, but members in particular or in parts. Uh, we are all in a different system. And as we just named the 10 systems that are in our body, they all work differently. Uh, but you have to admit uh, that these functions interactions uh, between parts produce behaviors. Uh, uh, we're not getting into medicine and all of those, but you understand uh, that interconnection between these parts uh, cause certain things that we call behaviors to come out in us. Uh, many times as we get older, senility, uh, it begins to happen to many. Uh, uh, they have Alzheimer's and these are the interconnection between different parts. Uh, because they are connected, they have an impact on others. Uh, listen, let's take for instance medicine. Uh, if you have a certain pre-existing ailment uh, and you and I'm going to take this particular medicine. Uh, well, on the bottle, it says, uh, if such symptoms occur and it gives them to you, uh, it tells you you need to see somebody. Uh, or it says, if you experience such uh, symptoms as these when you use it, uh, cease from its use and consult uh, medical attention. Uh, isn't it ironic how when you view the commercials, even on the television, uh, and they begin to tell you what you can use for certain condition. Uh, I, I'm amazed at the fact that uh, when they tell you what it'll do for you, uh, it takes longer in the commercial to tell you the things that could occur. Uh, and one of them many times is death. Uh, and so it means that although you are addressing one particular thing, you cannot to the neglect of the other systems that are in your body. Here we come now to the text of our scripture where Stephen, he is now sharing with those who have crucified the Lord and he's telling them this Jewish and proselytes, he's telling all of them what has occurred. He's taken them back and given them a history lesson. And he calls their generations before them, their ancestors. Uh, he said the ecclesia that was in the wilderness, this group that God had called out. Uh, and he goes on and share with them things that they already knew. Uh, but then he comes to the place where he began to tell them. Uh, and he says, you're stiff necked and uncircumcised. Watch this. In your hearts, uh, in in other words, he said, your heart and your ears, uh, you are not hearing the spirit. Uh, you are not receiving it. Uh, and you are ever clashing with the Holy Spirit, uh, that which God has sent through the prophets, uh, which God has sent through the seers, uh, causing you to understand God. Now, you got to remember this. Uh, at a 
Adam's ability to know the mind of God was interrupted. Uh, he doesn't go all the way back there, but he starts with the law, with what God has done with Abraham. And the Bible tells us, though, that this conscious, where man lived until the law, it allowed humans to live life without word from God until about 2,400 years. God speaks. Uh, he 2,500, 2,400 years, uh, then the law comes in. But prior to that, uh, look, the only one that God spoke to uh, was Noah, uh, and then he spoke to Abraham. All of this time, there is no word on record from God. Uh, only thing we have is that God allows man to live, and the writer tells us that where there is no law, there is no transgression, but we find out that still uh, hamartia is there, uh, the missing of the mark. Uh, so we come to find out the law comes, and Israel alone has clashes with God uh, via these prophets and seers, a word that God sends them. You must realize that though the prophets administered the word from God, the kings provided decrees to the people. Read your scriptures and find out very few kings God spoke directly to. And even then in scripture, though some speak of God speaking to the king, God spoke to him through a vessel uh, or through a vessel uh, that God sent. Uh, someone that God sent that always uh, the king had to look up to uh, because he was the mediator between God and man beside the priest. Uh, he brought a word from God. Uh, here the Bible tells us the law was holy and it was good, uh, but it could not accomplish its end because of the system, the system of obedience of the human could not possibly bring the performance. Uh, look what the Bible tells us. Uh, Paul says that the law was written <clears throat> to prove that man could not do it. Uh, that's simply one input. Uh, could not change man as he ought to. Uh, there had to be something that was able uh, to consider all the systems uh, and bring man into compliance with God. Uh, in other words, that man, he himself uh, could give God the glory. Uh, well, you think about it, a system uh, that depended on man to fulfill uh, his days of longevity Longevity, a system that depended on man to inherit what we call age enduring life. It was a system of himself. For the law said, if a man does this, he shall achieve this. It was a system of works, which means everyone had to work in order to achieve righteousness. However, it was proven that no works that man could do could ever bring him to the pinnacle of perfection whereby he could achieve this age enduring life. Because in this system of mankind, look at us just by being humans and see why just the world law coming to man, it could not make him holy. It could not give him the power he needed. Think about it, all of the rituals they had, coming and bringing the sacrifices, all of those still, they could not bring man and his system of being to a place whereby he could fulfill God's law. For the Bible said in the writing to the Hebrews, the one that had literally crossed over, but still the Bible said that the bulls and heifers, lambs and goats, their blood could not make the comer unto 
perfect or complete because it did not clear the conscious. It wasn't able to work on the inside like the power of God's spirit. Look at us humans. What about when a man encountered poverty and the pressure was upon him to feed his family and he would have to steal though he kept all the other laws uh, he broke the one that told him thou should not steal. Uh, what about sibling rivalry? Uh, and his aftermath of art that one would have against another sibling uh, because of hurt feelings. Uh, my God, that still even occurs today. Uh, how many times we find out uh, that we are at art with our siblings, our friends, our co-workers, uh, our family members, uh, which allows us to realize, uh, though many don't want to accept it, uh, you are still in the flesh uh, and susceptible to doing fleshly things uh, if you don't allow God to work in your life. Uh, and so we find death uh, was a linear problem, but was manifested in a complex system, mankind. Yes, the Bible said for by one man, he said, sin entered into the world, or death entered, and sin by death. Watch this, and so death was passed on to every man. So now we have a problem. We have something whereby it is a linear problem, but it's also a complex problem because of the system is working in. We sometimes feel like praising God. Sometimes we feel like doing good. Sometimes we feel like saying the right thing and all based upon various environments we're in uh, and diverse encounters that come or beset us. Uh, and so we find out uh, there's a complex system we're working with. Uh, but listen what the Bible said to prove it. Uh, it says that all the good uh, that man input it, uh, it was no good. Uh, he never could achieve righteousness. Uh, I like how Isaiah heard the word. Uh, and he responded with all. Uh, we are all as an unclean thing, uh, and all our righteousness uh, are as a filthy rag. Uh, listen, it's true. Uh, people do good things. Uh, it's true. I even agree uh, with those in philosophy uh, that says altruism is not 100% altruism, uh, because somewhere in there there's a tinge of something for oneself. Uh, if you ask somebody why they're doing what they do uh, and they said well it just makes me feel good. Uh, aha! The philosopher will say, uh, see, I told you uh, it wasn't all for the other person uh, because you have admitted it. Uh, it makes you feel good. So you are getting something out of it. But when we come to look at what God decide to do, uh, God said, listen, it's proven man cannot live by conscience and live up to God's standard. The law was sent to even validate the fact that even if given a law, man cannot live by God's standard. And so the Bible tell us uh, that God decided he would give grace. Uh, he said, listen, what I'm going to do since I cannot find no one. Uh, there is no one righteous, no, not one. Uh, the Bible said he looked down from heaven uh, and he couldn't find one. <clears throat> and so what God did, uh, he said, my own right hand uh, is going to bring me salvation to mankind. Uh, and so God 
heart then gives grace, uh, unmerited favor. Uh, he gives grace that which is not solicited. Uh, he gives grace that which is given liberally, uh, that which is given without asking, uh, and it won't take nothing in exchange for it. Uh, and so although you have been called uh, justified and designated uh, to be conformed to the image of his son, we find out we are still in the body of this death. And so Paul declares in Romans 7, he said, listen, I have an input of a good thought and I'm thinking to do the right thing. He says, but by the time I exhibit the acts, it has gone through a complex system. He says, and I find that I would do that I thought to do which was right, uh, I end up for some reason doing the wrong thing. Uh, maybe I thought about how somebody hurt my feelings. Uh, I thought about what they said to me. Uh, I thought about what they did a long time ago. Uh, I didn't like how they looked at me. Uh, and though I knew uh, I was supposed to act differently, uh, Paul says the outcome was totally ungodly. Uh, for that's what the law did. Uh, it brought you into the knowledge of knowing what God wanted, uh, but it gave you no power to escape from the complex system of death in us that work with all kinds of unrighteousness. So the Bible said that the grace of God which bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Kind. Look what God is doing. He's giving grace. The Bible tells us therefore when we receive salvation. Uh, it is a faith uh, that it might be by grace. Uh, look what he tells us. Uh, he said, for by grace are ye saved through faith, uh, and of that not of yourselves. Uh, it is the gift of God. Uh, you don't have to work for it. Uh, what you are doing is not bringing about your salvation. Uh, what you are doing uh, is yes, you are accomplishing what God has ordained for us to do before the founding of the ages. For the Bible said he has ordained good works for us to accomplish once he has called us to this grace. So when you think about it, if what we have is by grace, then it's no more of works. Otherwise, Paul said it cannot be grace. But if I work for it, uh, then it's no more grace. Uh, otherwise it's not a work. Uh, so you see what God's saying. Uh, you have been called to the kingdom for such a time as this uh, and every every other system uh, is contingent upon human behavior. Uh, conscious uh, the law uh, but none of them uh, could bring us to God like he designed but grace, the Bible said, has its perfect way. Grace brings us to him and it provides us with the righteousness that God desires us to have in Christ Jesus. So whether Paul says a believer, he wake or sleep, whether a believer is watching or not, when the Lord shall return, it shall not not stop them because it's Christ's body uh, that he has provided this grace. Uh, so listen my friend, uh, your flesh uh, yes is a warring against the spirit uh, but notice what the verse said uh, yet uh, the spirit provides a counter uh, and by the power of God uh, you'll find yourself being more than a conqueror. Uh, you'll find yourself being an overcomer uh, in the power of 
his grace. For Paul says, we have this power in earthen vessel. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this grace in earthen vessels that it all may be the work of God. No one can work their way to heaven. Yes, we are supposed to be doing good as much as we can. And whatever our hands find to do, do good. But it's not that that is procuring your salvation. It's not that that's securing your salvation. It is grace and grace alone. You ought to learn to tell the Lord, thank you, Lord, for grace. And tell those that you need, say, I'm winning by God's grace. Yes, I'm having conflict in the flesh. Yes, and my mind isn't thinking right. Yes, my actions are not fair, but by grace, I'm going through. I'm a win this battle. Like the songwriter said, I'm a running for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? I'm leaving the flesh behind. The songwriter said, I'm leaving all to follow Jesus because the flesh is not subject to the law of God. To grace neither indeed can be, but by God's power, he works in us for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And you, my friend, have to thank God for only by his grace I am winning. You, my friend, you're winning because of God. There's an incessant clashing that's going on in your body. The power of God that's in you is instructing you. It's telling you what you ought to do. And yes, there may be failure, but thanks be to God, grace will always superabound. And the Bible tells us, he that is born of God, no one that is born of God, it's impossible to continue in failure. Somebody says somebody then failed, yes, but that's all right. Let God work it out in their life because if they are born of God and have his seed in him, they cannot continue in such a way. God works it out and only by his grace am I winning. Yes, the flesh, it wants to do its thing. Yet, notice it says, yet the spirit, look what it does. It is against the flesh. It gives us power to overcome. And if you keep on reading down, on that end of that verse, it says, lest you should be doing whatever you may want. If the spirit did not work like it's working in our lives, we would be doing the deeds of the flesh. And remember what Paul said? To whom one works or is servant, that's the person that they are serving. If it's works unto righteousness or you're doing works, unto righteousness, unto God. Our time is up. Listen, there's an incessant clashing in your life. Yes, it's going, it's going to go on until God take you out of here. But you got to say every day, only by his grace, I am winning because God has called you because you were predestined. He has justified you. And yes, He's going to bring you to glory. God bless you. Continue to be prayerful as you go through this week and this season. And join in with us on next week as we'll have in-person service there at the sanctuary. Shall we pray? Father, we bless you and we thank you for the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for those that hear this word, recognize that where they thought they had failed, where they felt that there was nothing else they could do, Lord, that they can understand there's an incessant clashing going on in their life, but only by your grace are they winning. And when it looks like 
they have lost, they have still won because your grace superbounds and we bless you. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed.